Yes, my dear friend, welcome back to the channel. It is a very beautiful Tuesday morning here in Southeast Asia, Malaysia, to be precise. Wherever you are on the globe, I'm excited to come your way this very hour. Listen, dear friend, it is a good day, actually. I'm happy, I'm excited about this very hour. Why? Because even as we continue to analyze the game that we play, Chelsea played two days ago. Yes, that Sunday night football, my dear friend, it was a wonderful game we played. But a lot of talking points out of the game. A lot of talking points. And as you can see on the screen, that is Raheem Sterling. He generated so much talking points yesterday. In fact, after the game and yesterday, so much talking points. And it's not going anywhere yet. The, talk, the talks are still ongoing. Raheem Sterling, does he deserve to continue to play for Chelsea or not? Should he be sold in the summer or not? Who is our penalty taker? Is Raheem Sterling the penalty taker or Kopama is the penalty taker? Who is the dedicated penalty taker? What did the coach tell them? Who should be the one in charge of penalties? What is his role? We understand he is the senior most player on the pitch of play. Put aside Thiago Silva, who is not currently playing. He is the senior most player right now in Chelsea. As a matter of fact, he earned even more than every other player right now in Chelsea. £325,000, if I'm not mistaken. But I don't want us to be judging him based on how much he's earning. It's not his fault. We know his career path. He started from Liverpool as a young chap. Very bright prospect. He was doing quite well, even though he was not mature then in Liverpool. You cannot judge him by the mistakes he made in Liverpool. Manchester City saw it clearly that this is a pure talent. They bought him from Liverpool. He went to, to Manchester City. He grew into the man that he is today. But the question is, why would Pep Guardiola allow him to go? He has his own flaws. For Pep Guardiola to allow him to go, it means that Raheem Sterling has his own flaws. It, his major flaws has always been his final delivery. He scores goals in Manchester City, but he, he, he has the potential, the talent to score more than, he, than what he has been doing. The missed chances, missed opportunities, even with, with City under, Pochett, under uh, Pep Guardiola was glare. So Pep was only looking for an opportunity to offload him and buy someone like Haaland. Yeah. Even with Manchester City, he was not the main striker. He, he, he was not the main target. He was not the senior most there. He was not the leader in the team. He wasn't. Raheem Sterling has never been a leader in Liverpool. He has never been a leader in Manchester City. Now he's in Chelsea and we expect him to lead. This is where the problem is. He's in Chelsea. Unfortunately, he found himself with young, talented players around him. Which we expect him to be that leader in the dressing room, that leader outside the dressing room, that leader on the pitch of play. We understand. Listen, this season, Raheem Sterling scored eight goals and gave six assists. Eight goals and six assists. Yet, the missed opportunities are more than the eight. He could have been around 15 goals by now, Raheem Sterling, if he had, been, if he had taken all his opportunities. Sterling should have been around 15 goals by now. And that would have put Chelsea in a better position on the league table. Dear friend, we are talking about a team that last season ended the league on 12th position. This season, we have 10 games to go with one outstanding game in hand. And we are still languishing around 11th position. Have we improved? I will come back to that in my next episode. Has Chelsea really improved since the beginning of the season? I have a special one I'm going to talk about when, it, when I get to that. But right now, I just want you to look at Raheem Sterling. This was when he won the penalty. Who was the dedicated penalty taker in Chelsea? Who? Who was assigned to take penalties at Chelsea? That is a job of the coach. That is a job of the coach. A coach cannot just say the player should decide who takes it. No. For Christ's sake, yesterday, one of my episodes, I said the fans should stop booing Raheem Sterling. Yes, I'm against the booing. I'm against that. But then we still need to correct things because if we don't talk about it, there will not be any change. 
There must be pressure before the player can do better. Now, we watch carefully. The pe that penalty that was won, that he won, we are in a semi-final of a competition that could take us to Europe. You don't use that moment to build your confidence. No, that is not a time for try and error. Let me try to use this goal to build my confidence back. No. Kopama took five penalties this season and he scored all the five penalties. He took all five penalties this season and he scored all the five penalties. So we cannot just say, oh, he tried to use that to boost his confidence. No. In the semi-final of FA Cup, leading us to Wembley. My goodness. Assuming we lost the match yesterday and we missed out on going to Wembley. What would have been happening to Raheem Sterling right now? What would he have said? He came up apologizing. I agree. But what would he have said? Dear friend, if you are new here on this channel, this is Salon's blog. Yes, can you like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the channel if it's your first time. And if you have been here with me all this while, dear friend, I'm very emotional about Chelsea. And that is why I'm still, like I promise you, we are going to be diagnosing the game throughout this week until next week. We are in international break. So we have all the time to analyze the game. Individual players, I'm going to be taking them one by one. One by one. And we will analyze all. After now, I'll be going to the, the, whether the team has improved or not. My next episode. From there, we'll go to Nicholas Jackson. Yes, and we'll go to Moindrick. I'll be taking them stage by stage. Let's move it like that. Let's see what we can get out of it. And help me in your comment section. Let me hear from you what you think about what I'm saying about Raheem Sterling. He is supposed to play a role of, you know, a mentor. I read, I read, I don't know if I have it here, when Noni Madreke spoke that he is being, okay, Chukwemeka, he said, for us youngsters, especially for me, that's not this, uh, 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 Noni and Kopama, he said, Chukwemeka speaking here, he said, for us youngsters, especially for me, Noni and Kopama, Rahim has helped us a lot since we came here. Rahim has helped them a lot since they came here. He is always on us, showing what we can do well and what to improve on. He is always on us, inside and outside football. Rahim is a big part of what we do. He is like my big brother. This is Chukwemaka speaking, saying that, for him and Noni Madweke and Kopama, Raheem Sterling has been playing a big role. Telling them what in areas that they can improve, helping them. And he sees Raheem like a big brother. By the way, someone that is telling them what to do, and he himself is full of mistakes on the pitch. This penalty he played, that aside, the free kick. What is that the things that he's teaching the young guys, Noni Madweke, Chukwemeka, and Kopama to do on a pitch of play? These guys have respect for him. That is why I believe Kopama didn't drag the ball from him to take the penalty. Because of the respect. But with what Chukwemeka is saying right now, what exactly is Raheem Sterling teaching them? If he himself, he is so inconsistent. Listen, Raheem has the talent. He has everything at the age of 29. By this time, Raheem Sterling should be explosive, should be a leader on and off the pitch, leading this young squad to victory in every game. The free kick would have been scored easily by another player. The penalty would have been scored. You can imagine if we have scored, there would have been five goals. Don't forget, we need goals. We need goals to climb up the, up the table. Dear friend, well, this special episode, this is your breakfast, wherever you are on the globe. Yes. And I want to leave you here because I'll be back with more explosives. But for me, once again, let me say, Sterling has apologized for the poor performance. And I want to play with the fans. We can criticize the players, but let us not be booing them when there's game ongoing. If we are booing them and the opposition fans are also booing them, what would they then do? Who would they tend to? Let's make our own home, especially Stamford Bridge, a fortress. 
that our own players will be comfortable enough to play there. I will see you in the next one when you see me, dear friend. Shalom and peace.